Hi, this is Dr. Mahadevan of Stanford University School of Medicine. I'm here with my good friend, Sal Khan. <laughs> and uh, we're, we're following up to our earlier discussions about cervical spine injuries or neck injuries, and we're going to talk about some of the things you might do to manage a patient who might have a cervical spine injury in the case that you had to do something invasive like manage their airway. Right. When you say manage their airway, there might be something stuck in their airway or blocking their airway. Usually the tongue falls back and blocks the airway, but you're right. If, if your airway is blocked, you can't get air to your lungs, and if you can't get air to your lungs, you die. Right. And we said usually your tongue falls back. That's like, like normal. Wait, what are you talking about? Like that's When you're unconscious, the, the musculature, the muscles that control your tongue relax. Right. Uh, because you're unconscious, your tongue falls back exactly. Right. And it falls back into your pharynx, which is a posterior part of your throat there. Right, right, right. And okay, that right, blocks right. the air from either going th either through your mouth, your nose, into your trachea, and then into your lungs. Really? So if someone's just unconscious and they fall back like that, they, they could just not, d that would, might cause them to stop breathing? That would uh, obstruct their ability to breathe. And so uh -huh. even if they were trying to breathe, they would, wouldn't be able to move as much air into their okay, lungs. Okay, okay, okay. So it could, it could be literally something as simple as moving the tongue out of the way. Exactly. And, and that's really what these first two diagrams show. Uh, the one with the young boy there is showing a technique called the head tilt, chin lift. Head tilt, okay. So this is, he's laying down, they're pushing on his, okay, they're pushing on that hand down on the top of his head and then lifting up there. Exactly, and, right. and in, in doing so, in sort of tilting the head and pulling the chin up, what you're effectively doing is pulling that tongue out of the way and opening the airway so air can get into your lungs. I see. And, and this is a little off topic, but where did you get these pictures? Uh, these are actually pictures of my children. Yeah, I thought, I thought he was joking because they're clearly drawing. So <laughs> I thought he lived in some type of animated reality. But no, apparently they are your children. That's my son, Aditya, on the left and my daughter, Lavanya, on the right. <laughs> okay, so uh, someone traced them afterwards. They don't, they aren't. Absolutely. Uh, a, a very uh, excellent medical illustrator okay. uh, changed them from pictures into illustrations. Oh, okay. okay, very cool. So sorry, that was off topic. Um, and so uh, the head tilt, chin lift. But as we talked about earlier, if you had a spine injury, uh, moving the neck or tilting the head could potentially cause an injury. And so in trauma victims, right. we tend to avoid using this particular technique and we use the one there on the right. I see. I see. Because they might be right. Something might have happened to their spine or their neck. And the last thing you want to do is turn their neck or flex or extend their I neck. I see. Right. Because this is, this is going to put a little pressure on the neck around that area. Exactly. Exactly. Right, right, and the right. bones can move. And if the bones move, right. they can injure the spinal cord. So this cord. is, he's, or the, the, whoever this person, whose hands these are. My wife's hands. Oh, these, are, these are your wife's hands? <laughs> yes. Really? It's a family affair. Uh, and, and so what, what, is, what is she doing exactly? She's doing a maneuver which we would use in someone who potentially could have an injury to the neck called the jaw thrust. And essentially what she's doing is she's grasping the angle of the mandible. Right. Exactly right, right there. there. Right. Kind of like a little 90 degree angle that we have. And pulling that mandible forward. And in doing that, what she's doing is she's doing the same thing as the head tilt chin lift, just she's not flexing the neck or extending right. the neck. So you're kind of just moving the jaw as opposed to everything else. And in moving the jaw, you're pulling that tongue forward and opening the airway. I see, because the tongue's in there and right. So it's okay. That makes sense. And so this is the technique that we use for trauma victims. Right, right. And the reason that this is important is really uh, shown in the, in the x-rays. Uh, and what you see is, is the same person. And in mm -hmm. the first x-ray, you can see, as we talked about earlier, uh, their spine is well aligned. So if right. you were to check their alignment, anterior vertebral body line. Yeah, I'm an expert at this. Posterior thing. vertebral body line, spinal lamina line, mm -hmm. and spinous process line all look fine in this particular circumstance. But what you can see is if you remove the lines, uh, you can see that there is a small fracture right, right here. there, exactly. Right here. Uh, and right in front of that fracture, there's a bunch of swelling. All that stuff right there is your soft tissues, and so they're swollen. And what you can't see is that, that your whole um, cervical spine is held together by ligaments, and sometimes they can be torn, right? and you may not be able to see them on the x-ray. I see. How, how did you know there was swelling here? Uh, if you look at the x-ray, you can see that the distance between the front of the spine mm -hmm. and the front of the soft tissues is widened. Than, than what you would normally see. Exactly. I see. Exactly. It's usually very small, very narrow in that part of the cervical spine. I see. Makes sense. 
And what, what you realize is if a person were to come and try to open the airway, mm -hmm. uh, what happens on the next radiograph could occur. So, right. if, so I if, were they, to, if they use this technique right over here. Exactly. If they were used a head tilt, chin lift, and were to tilt that head back. Oh, yeah, put that pressure right there. Exactly. What could happen, uh, the next x-ray shows. They push the, the uh, I wanted to use magenta. It's easier to see. So they push that back. Exactly. Then, wow. Okay. And now if you were to draw your lines again. Yeah. Specifically, the anterior you might get away with. Yeah, but, but this the uh, this one right definitely the here, posterior clearly, line is clearly. abnormal. Right, right. And again, the the key fact here is that right behind that line that you drew is your spinal cord. Yes, which is important. <laughs> which is right. And so one of the f uh, one of the tenets of emergency medicine and medicine in general is do no harm. And here, in an attempt to open the airway by this head tilt chin lift maneuver we potentially could do harm to the patient. Yes, wow, wow, yeah. Do no harm, it's a good good, good first, first <laughs> rule of thumb. Right, right. The next step that we would take if just simply opening the airway wasn't adequate to get someone breathing again, potentially would be to actually intubate them or insert a plastic breathing tube into their trachea and allow them to breathe in it. What so, you can see there is the, the act of intubation. So yeah, I've heard this word intubate a lot. My, my wife is a physician and I've always heard here. So this is literally you're inserting a tube to clear things? You're inserting, inserting a tube to create a passageway from the oxygen-rich atmosphere. Right, right. And directly right. into your lungs. And, and again, if you've, your tongue has fallen back and you can't keep it out of the way or you've vomited and you're unconscious. I, I see. This would be something that would How help. How far you does this tube go? It it starts right at your mouth, uh -huh. and it goes all the way down. It's a flexible tube, I'm assuming. It's a flexible tube, and it would go right in between this. Oh yes. Cartilage right here, so it would kind of go right there, exactly right okay. through the larynx, and right right there, where your where you've got the pointer there is where your vocal cords are, and it would go just beyond the vocal cords, okay. right into your trachea. I see. Exactly. exactly. And that's because that's where you normally have something blocking. That is the connection between the oxygen-rich oh, environment. Oh, yeah. After that, then the oxygen can get to you, at least some part of your lungs. You've got a tube now. Right. You've got an airway, and you can and you can give, deliver oxygen to a patient through that tube. I see. I see. And what are they doing here? What are they pinching? Uh, in this particular uh, diagram, what they're doing is a couple of things. Or th there's th actually three people there. One person who looks like they're pinching is actually putting pressure on, a, on your cartilage, your cricoid cartilage, and they're doing that to push back and, and, and occlude your esophagus. Occlude the esophagus. Wait, what is occlude? Occl they want to close off the esophagus oh. because the esophagus connects to the stomach. The stomach is full of uh, whatever you had to oh, eat. Oh, I see. So if you might be continuing to fluid could be coming out and all of that, so you want to... I see. So you want to, there, there could be stuff coming out from the stomach. Right. And then, and that tube, the esophagus runs right, it, right back here right, uh, and right. it could come up. Sorry. It shows how much I know about anatomy. <laughs> this is right. So exactly. Esophagus. Right. Right. It's Running right sense. behind your airway right there. And right. by pushing back, you collapse the esophagus and prevent right. any, what we call passive regurgitation. I see. Or so they're, they're pushing this, back, and let me do this in another color. They're actually pushing back. And the esophagus is likely to get closed then. So exactly. something can't come from the stomach. That doesn't close the, the trachea is more rigid. The trachea is a rigid structure, and this is right, this is the actually the first ring of the trachea is a cricoid cartilage, and I that's see. what they're pushing on right there. I see. And it's just rigid there. So when you push, it closes the esophagus, trachea can still stay open. Exactly. Right, exactly. Uh, so there's three people. One person that you, we talked about is giving cricoid pressure, and that would be that gentleman right, right there, or, or a young lady. Uh, the second person is actually holding the head, as you yep. can see. Yep. And the reason that they're doing that is, is for what we showed earlier. They don't want that head to extend or flex. So they're actually holding the person in the neutral position right. to prevent that those bones potentially from moving. Right, because this is, you know, they're going to be jiggling this thing through, and it, if this, there wasn't someone holding it, it could do that same damage. That Absolutely. And, and when you're that guy at the top who's trying to see the vocal cords and pass right. the tube, you don't care about anything else except for seeing the vocal cords. So you might right, inadvertently right. flex the neck or extend right. the neck. That no, makes sense. Makes sense. Is that also why uh, they said at an accident, no, don't move the person and that type of That's thing? That's exactly right. why. Um, you, again, do no harm uh, in trying to help the person by lifting them up or, or tilting their head or flexing their neck. You potentially could, right. to, and could so cause it. Right. And wait for the EMTs or, or whoever, and then they'll 
Absolutely. Right. I and see. if you really had to open their airway, you could use the jaw thrust maneuver. Right, right. Just pull their jaw forward. Exactly. Hold on to the, hold exactly. On. Is this, is, is, we were talking right, we touched on right before this, this, there's other ways of doing this or there's other methods that people talk about? Of um, this, this cricoid pressure is quite controversial because mm -hmm. one of the, one of the things that is it's supposed to help you uh, with this procedure, and some people feel that it may not be proven to help you or it potentially can cause injury, but those of us that are older, right. uh, have used this technique for a long time, still stand by it. Okay, this is what y'all teach it at the med school. Exactly. Okay, exactly. very cool. Well, well, well thank you. This is, this is very, very useful. You bet.